Hello. Um, I'm going to talk about Andre Heimgartner because I read an article on Speak Cafe saying that uh, Andre, well not Andre, but that Erebus are looking at Jack LeBrock for the replacing Will Brown and I just do not think that Jack should be the choice. I mean, Jack has done a, he's done a great job at Matt Stone Racing. Um, I don't think they expected to be in their current position, but they obviously worked hard at it. Andre Heimgartner should be at Erebus fighting for a championship. I just don't understand why he think maybe he can't afford to buy out his contract or something. I don't imagine it'd be too expensive for him to do that, but. And I know he wants like a multi-year deal and wants to be at one team for a long time, but you do have to make a successful career out of yourself so that you can have a successful later career. So it's annoying to think that one that a great driver is choosing not to be in a championship capable car. He's choosing to be in a podium car. And that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, of course, Andre is scoring a lot of podiums with BJR. He's doing a great job. Um, and he's been very impressive. Been a great replacement for Nick Perkett um, at BJR. And um, I don't know. It's there's this. It's just frustrating to, frustrating that he's not an option or he's not being considered. And that those discussions aren't happening. Uh, so, like Jack O'Brock's obviously got history at Erebus. Uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm going to this video about Andre Heimgartner. So, obviously Andre um, had a bit of a Jamie Winkup sort of time in the category when he first started. He was, he came in with Super Black Racing, did the 2014 Bathurst 1000, and then in 2015, he was their main driver, until he got booted out at the end of 2015, replaced with Chris Pither. So then in 2016, he was at uh, Lucas Dunfield Motorsport, and he was just sort of banged around the back and got caught in incidents, and it wasn't a very great time. And... Then he had, he had a year off, uh, I guess he couldn't get into LDM for 2017, so he was, he had a, he, he could have been, he could have been a co-driver, but I guess nobody wanted him, and Brad Jones Racing had him as a backup, um, and the story is, and well, the the tale is. It's not even a story or a tale. It's the facts. Uh, Ash Walsh was in a, a uh, sports car accident, something like that, and a GT accident, I think. And so Ash was out, and he wasn't able to drive the car. I think it was after Sandown. Uh, he drove at Sandown, and then. Andre came in for Bathurst and he did a great job. Um, they were running up there in the in the wet, doing a great job. And then they go to Gold Coast and they score a podium, Tim Slade and Andre. And so, um, because of those performances, Andre got a comeback um, with Kelly Racing uh, after Todd Kelly retired. So in 2018... He was in a, he was a Nissan driver, and he was he was he was, a, he was pretty decent in twenty eighteen in the Nissan. Um, beating Simona is pretty much all he really needed to do to show that he could do it. Um, but also beating Michael Caruso and Rick Kelly at times, and at the end of the year he got really good, um, and started being the guy at Kelly Racing, so. 2019 comes around, he gets his first podium, he gets, um, what, the front row start for 
um, the Sandown 500, um, and pretty much becomes their lead driver in 2019. 2020, the team scales down to two cars for Rick and Andre, and they switch to Mustangs, and Andre gets his first, his first pole position? I think it's, I think it's his first pole position. And gets a couple of podiums in the Mustang, and does a great job. And then roll on 2021, Rick retires, David Reynolds comes in, Andre does a better job than Dave. And, I mean, they're, they're pretty much equal, but maybe Andre beat Dave. So, and this uh, win from pole in the wet at Tail and Bend happened. And I think it was on the Saturday, so I missed out. I came in on the Sunday, so the, the day after Andre got the win from pole in the wet. And then it soon came about that he wasn't going to be at the team for 2022, which was a bit strange. Because Nick Furcat made the move to go to Walkinshaw, and so once once that was clear, Brad Jones jumped on getting Andre as a solid uh, replacement, and Andre's been really good since then. His twenty twenty three has been very impressive. Um, not quite as on song as twenty two, but maybe better. That he's just been racking up podiums this year. Solidly in the top 10 of the championship, where he wanted to be. I think he's currently 6th in the championship. There's not much more he can do. Um, supposedly, all the uh, Chevys are pretty much equal. They've all got the same engines, they've all got the same components. They have to be... Um, I think maybe there are some bits of, that are different, like the way that the parts are made or something like that, or... You know, fabrication, the way the way that that's all done, might be different. The way the teams operate. Um, otherwise, you would see a bit more. Um, wildness in terms of results, but we just haven't seen that. We've seen the sort of the same sort of teams doing a really good job. Um, and. I have the, I have a, a sort of like watched the the career of Carlos Sainz in Formula One, and he just kept on going from team to team, and he, but he didn't just go from team to team. He went from one car that wasn't as good, like Toro Rosso, then he went to what Renault, then he went to uh, McLaren, and then Ferrari. He's in a car that can potentially win the championship now, and that's what Andre should have done. You don't muck around being in a being in a car that might be in a car that can. If you're a driver that can get those results, and I think Andre is at that point, he shouldn't be in a team in in a team that that can't. It would be very surprising if they did deliver those sorts of like championship contender results, but BJ aren't going to do that. I don't think so. Um, they're in a very good financial position, with every car having a full-time sponsor, um, like Pizza Hut, SCT Logistics, Midis, R&J Batteries. Um, and I guess... I don't know if R and J were. I don't think R and J care who their who the driver is, so it doesn't make any sense to me to think that a driver would just decide to stay at a team for a long time if you couldn't get race wins. You know, like Frost, Mark went and bottom stayed at at Ford Performance Racing and Pro Driving Tickets for a very long time. Because he knew he had a shot at the title in that team. And they were always really trying to do it. And they weren't able to do it. Apart from that one time. And Fabian Coulthard left Brad Jones Racing. Fabian pretty much had his, his, his true shot. His great opportunity at BJR. 
and made his name at that team. And Andre has done that as well. If like, Andre wouldn't have really had the opportunity to show how good he really is if it weren't for BJR. And so, the same thing with Nick Perkett. And Nick's at Walkinshaw having a go. And it was a, a, it was a bad move, basically. Obviously ended up being a bad move. So, yeah. Andre Heimgartner has disappointed me.